Hello everybody, my name is Necroxis, and we just saw yesterday night actually, it was data mined, and I don't think it's been officially released yet, but we have the uh, we have the English version of it, the post uh, Archimond death cinematic that happens at the end of the new raid, and I want to talk about it with you guys because it has a lot of uh, implications for the lore. So, I'm going to show it to you right now. I just want to make a note that the video that I have combines the cinematic right before you fight Archimonde and right after. You're going to see Gul'dan summon him, and that happens right after the second to last boss, which is Manoroth. And then, go right into that with no cut, there's going to be the ending cinematic. So, here you go. Enjoy. think it's over. Gul'dan and the devils that command him are not so easily banished. I fear this is only beginning. If you ever need us, we will be here. <laughs> Until we meet again. A great man once told me, in the light, we are one. The future is ours, and we will see Drano rebuilt together. All right, so that was that. Um, <laughs> I think if you were following me on Twitter, um, I was rage tweeting about this, but... I think at this point, I once again have transcended anger to come to disappointment and kind of sadness. Um, let's just deconstruct it piece by piece, and I'll tell you why I thought it was... It was animated great. It just was really stupid lore-wise. Um, first, it was really weird that Gul'dan, like, willy-nilly, almost half-assed summons Archimond out of all people. It's kind of funny because I've been playing through uh, the Undead campaign, the Scourge campaign of Warcraft 3, and for those of you guys who don't remember, and if you don't, I'm actually beginning to release, the, I'm going to begin releasing that playthrough soon. Um, that entire campaign is about finding the artifacts, getting the power needed, doing all of these things just to summon Archimon to our universe when he destroyed Dalaran. You know, it had to do with Kel'Thuzad after he was killed being reanimated as a, as a lich. It had to do with stealing the Book of Medivh. It had to do with going to Dalaran in place of power, you know... A bunch of, a large amount of time going into prepare to summon Archimond. And while Gul'dan is definitely powerful, and I am like the biggest Gul'dan fanboy that I even know of, he's not that powerful. Like, he's not that powerful that he could just be like, whoosh, here's Archimond. It, it was really, really weird. Also, another, a little nitpicky thing that bothered me is the portal that he summons clearly has a side and a top. 
There's definitely a top. It's not like opened up. There's a top. And when you see Archimonde walk through, his leg is so big, it's just his leg that comes through the portal. So he'd be like bumping, like up against the portal as he's coming through. I know it's kind of funny to think of it that way, but I was like, you could have fixed that so easily by just making the portal just be like, like when he summoned it, instead of going like this, just going like this, like opening it up like this. It was just, it was such a weird little, and then when you see Archimon, he's not nearly as big, and I know that he can change his size canonically, but it was just a really weird nitpicky thing that bugged me. So, um, let's get into the, the actual ending cinematic. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about and on my list of notes that I have here on the side is Grom. Um, and it's the seemingly fact that Grom is all but forgiven for all of the shenanigans that he has done. To the point that nobody even bothers saying anything to him about like, look, you did all of this terrible stuff. We're not going to work with you. We're not going to kill you, but we're not going to work with you. We have no desire to be anywhere near you, anywhere part of anything you're doing. You rip the planet apart almost in every way except physically through war and genocide. And you're the reason that Ghoul Dan even was fucking able to do all of this shenanigans in the first place. You captured him. You put all this stuff up just to get to Azeroth to destroy a world that had done nothing to you. Even though you saw this vision from your son... I think it's clear at this point that it was a bunch of crap. No one bothered to... It's a lot of convenient ignorance is what is what is really frustrating about this story. Um, and I can go back and talk about many things, like the convenient ignorance of Duratan never finding out that Thrall's his son, which I guess, considering this has a very final feeling to the cinematic, I'm going to declare this is probably the end of the story part of Warlords. It ends with... Duratan never knowing that Thrall is his son. You know, uh, Grom only very re very briefly realizing that he is his, uh, that Garrosh is his son, and then nothing really comes of it. Um, you know, nobody bothers to explain how Garrosh did what he did with the, with the vision of time. It's just Grom gets, Grom gets like blanket forgiven for like no reason. And what's really... I think what really is the only thing that's angering me still is at the end when Grom says Draenor is free, there's like Draenei cheering with him. I would be like, what the fuck? He destroyed your culture, your civilization. He almost annihilated your people like in our universe. How are you just like, it's all better now, even though our leader is dead, a bunch of our people are dead, a bunch were enslaved. A bunch were sacrificed by Ner'zhul on your orders, Grom, to summon this taboo thing. How is everything just forgiven? It's such a lazy, lazy, lazy cop-out. And I was talking with Muffinus, who is uh, one of the senior designers, and I'll show these tweets right now, but he basically says, I don't think everything is forgiven, but Grom has seen the atrocities of the Legion, and neither side wants more bloodshed. It's better than our Draenor, which is Outland, and Uneasy Truce keeps Karabor standing. And then he has the gall to say Marad died for something after all. Marad died because Grom started this war, of, this genocidal war against people who did nothing to him. Who did absolutely nothing, presented no threat, some of which are his own people, the Frost Wolves. And he's willing to genocide not only them, not only the Frost Wolves, but go to another universe that has nothing to do with him and kill everybody there based on the crazy-ass prophecies of this weirdo that he just comes to his camp one night with this weird artifact and shows him it. So then, after Muffinus tweeted that, he wasn't talking to me, but then I tweeted at him and I said, look, I really like 6.2 gameplay-wise, but do you guys really not see Alliance frustration that for a second time something like this is happening? Uh, Grom faces no consequences for all the evil he's done. Same for scapegoating all of the Catahorde decisions on Garrosh. And you guys know my feelings on that, about how the Horde was fine with going along with all of Garrosh's fucking crazy-ass shenanigans until the last minute when he turns on them. But none of them have to face the consequences for any of their actions. It's all just on Garrosh. Um, so he says, 
IMO, this is not our world. If Grimash and Yorel can live in harmony, it is a better world. All of the children and farmers of Elador, the elder shaman of Nagrand, are saved. Was it worth it? And then, because I feel like he's being super disingenuous and trying to make it seem like I don't think any of the, the faceless NPCs that we'll never see in the story were, had, had survived. Um, he's trying to like make me cl claim that none of that was worth it. Even though, let's be honest, for almost all intents and purposes, that has nothing to do with anything. You're never going to see those characters. They have nothing to do with the story. They don't even have names. But I responded with saying, yes, of course, but it's also odd to say that Murad died for something when it was Brown's war that caused his death, no? And then he says, sometimes that is the price of peace. Thank Garash for feeling the warmongering and Kairos for being a jerk. And while I didn't say this anymore and we stopped we didn't have any more um, exchanges after that. I was thinking, you yourself said thank Garash for fueling his warmongering. So the warmongering was already there. Garash just had to push it a little bit. That doesn't mean Grom has, should face no consequences. It means Garash should face consequences, which he does, by the way, not from the Alliance or Horror, because Thrall kills him, which, again, I've talked about before, in cheapening the, the justice factor for each either faction. So it's just, once again, we get this hippy-dippy peace ending where the villain doesn't get the justice he deserves, and we're supposed to just roll with it because peace. Like, <laughs> it's such it's such a cop-out, and I can totally, and I, I, I completely and utterly see and understand, by the way, while why the non lore devs are saying this because they really can't say anything else you know they didn't develop the story but you know i i tweeted at muffinus who isn't a lore developer only because he was already tweeting about you know lore stuff and he's the only one that has been so far to my knowledge but this it, it's it's so weird that the Drenai just get beaten on over and over and over and over again for really no other purpose than to show that this group is evil. And then after the conflict has ended, they're just like, it's cool, man! <laughs> like, let's see. The original Orcish Horde annihilated the Draenei. Barely any left. Um, in War Crimes, we see Valen basically say, eh, it was worth it for the Orcs to free themselves from the blood. Like, Fucking what? And you're the leader of the faction. So then we get to Burning Crusade, and, you know, Kael'thas' Blood Elves just fucking what-the-fuck pwn the, the few Draenei that are left, steal their spaceship, force them to flee their home and crash into Azeroth. What does Villain do at the end? He reignites the Sunwell. He doesn't make any mention. He, he, he vaguely references Lady Lyadrin in stealing Muru's power, but then is like, it's cool, bros. Here's the light. <laughs> and now in Warlords of Draenor... This other universe of Draenei, their leader gets killed, they're, they're one of their new exarchs, Yorel's sister, gets sacrificed to this fucking dark star from Bynirzul on Grom's orders. A lot of their people are enslaved, a lot of them are killed, Vindicator Murad dies in the defense of Shatrath. And at the end, she's just like, yeah, we're going to rebuild together. Woo! Freeze frame. And that's how the expansion, like, ends with her, like, cheering up in the air. Like, yeah, we'll do it together. And right next to her is the guy who caused all this fucking nonsense. It's, there's a difference between being peace-loving. There's a difference between wanting peace f across factions and being, I don't even know how to, how to describe it, like, naively ignorant of how to deal with people like this. If someone came and killed, like, my entire family, I don't know if I necessarily would want them to die, but if they were arrested, I would be like, I want fucking nothing to do with you. Go live in prison. Enjoy your fucking terrible life based on the consequences of what you did. But don't ever let me see you again or talk to you again. And that is how it should have ended. Granted, I know Azeroth and or this universe and ours aren't the same, but the principle stands. I'll get more on that later, because at the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you how I think the cinematic should have went. Um, so then we get to Cadgar basically saying, I must return to my people, and then flying away, <laughs> even though there's a lot of shit to do still. 
But, um, you know, it, it's, it's funny because at the end of the second war, when the Dark Portal is destroyed, um, Cadgar remains behind and he's analyzing the portal and he's talking about how, hey, it, it's still connected to Outland and it still possibly could work. We need to set up, like, guard posts here and make sure that nothing ever happens. That's why Netherguard Keep is established in the first place, by the way, which gets completely destroyed by Grom, but fucking who cares? All those people dead, but it doesn't really matter um, because we forgive him. <laughs> But he just, he sees Gul'dan, like, escape, and we'll get to him in a second, but he, see, he doesn't see Gul'dan die, and then he just leaves. Like, why wouldn't he, he already has a history of, like, staying behind and trying to analyze things and, you know, see where this portal goes, and does it still connect to Draenor, can someone reopen it again, blah, 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 blah. He's just like, peace, bros, I'm out, and then he leaves, <laughs> presumably to go back to Azeroth. And it's just like... I know it's implied that he's trying to, like, f he's still wary that Gul'dan's still out there, but why would you leave the place he was just at? Why wouldn't you stay there and do what you've done before and analyze the portal and see where it goes and see if it can be reopened and make sure there's, like, a guard place established in case it does and someone's always watching it? Blah, 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 blah. He just pieces out and leaves. Um, so... And now we're going to get to the point of Grom once again that I, on my list, I, a little bit out of order, but going back into the Grom issue, there's not a, Thrall's not here. And while normally I would be, like, this is like the second time where normally I'd be okay with it, but he kind of needs to be here since he's the point of view character who knows most about orc culture. I just spit when I said that. You can see how disgusted I am with orcs. Most about orc culture with it, with it. I mean, when it comes to, like, our universe and consequences of things that have not happened yet in this other one, but have in our universe. Like, this goes back into the idea of forgiving forgiving Garage. Thrall should have been there at least to, like, explain... There, like, maybe even, like, a five-second scene where Thrall is, like... You see Thrall take Grom off and is, like, to, to the side while everyone else is talking and explaining, like... Look, this is what happens in our universe. This is what you did. Garrosh was your son. This is all the terrible things he did. Blah, 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 blah. We don't have to see that conversation take place, but just go see the two of them go off so he explains it. There's once again this fucking no context between like a bunch of these characters in this universe who under realistic standards would have been told all of this. If this was a realistic story, let's say George R. R. Martin was writing this and I'll stop you right there and agree with you that he wouldn't write this fucking terrible shit to begin with. But let's say that he was. Durek Tan would have known Thrall as his father at some point. Grom would have been told all of the fucking shit that he does in our universe after the conflict's over. More people would be dead. But um, any realistic author, or even anyone, any author who's even slightly better than this, would have had the balls to just deal with the fact that they are doing a time and universe travel story and deal with the consequences that come from that. And Blizzard just wants to, like, have their cake and eat it to introduce a new universe, a new time back in the past of this new universe, and not deal with, like, any of the consequences except for the very end when Gul'dan escapes. That's the only thing they wanted to do, really, is what, in my opinion, is have Gul'dan cause the next expansion. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself, though. But there's not, Thrall's not here to, like, explain to, like, Duratan or Grom anything. And it's just... How how can the expansion end with uh, with both of those characters not knowing like any of this stuff? It's so basic and juvenile and just terrible storytelling that I just I can't comprehend how multiple people could be like could 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 check off the story and be like yeah it works it's good it's good it's good let's just keep going come on it makes sense. So now we get to Gul'dan's fate, and I made it a point to leave him for last. Um, Lots of question marks regarding him. Um, at first, while I was angry about Gul'dan, now I'm just more confused. Like, what was the pact that he signed with, uh, with Archimonde? What, is he, what was he talking about? Why is Archimonde suddenly turning on Gul'dan? I mean, Archimonde has a tendency of punishing minions who failed him, but Gul'dan summoned him to Draenor. He didn't fail him. Granted, I know Archimonde was dying, I didn't mention Archimonde yet. We'll talk about him at the very end after, after, after this. But, you know, he didn't fail him. He summoned him to, to Draenor. He wasn't even participating in the fight, really. I mean, Gul'dan's, like, opening portals and summoning demons to to help Archimonde in the fight, if you guys haven't seen any uh, gameplay footage of it yet. But, he, uh, so Gul'dan's just trying to escape 
to Azeroth, and he still is loyal to the Legion for all intents and purposes. We have no... Or he's trying to escape through the portal, which goes to the Nether. The Nether. But why would he, like... It seemed like he was he was killing him. Like, why would he do that to a loyal minion who still is loyal to them? So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, nothing has led us to believe he's not. Like, why would he do that? And since we we saw that Archimon came out of that portal, and we can presume it was either, like, fucking straight to Argus, or at least to the Twisting Nether, more likely the Twisting Nether, because based on the, the vague mythic strategies we've seen in dungeon dungeon journal he takes the players to the to the nether at 40 percent health why would he why wouldn't he let him like leave like why would he you know i just don't he pushes him through to the nether or whatever and then the portal explodes like why it like seems like he's self-defeating like his goal like yes he died but the portal's still open and demons can still come through why would you push school down through and then like destroy it Unless he's sending him to Azeroth, which again would also be nonsense because we didn't see the portal change in any way. And like I was mentioning and then got sidetracked, we saw Archimon step through, which means it was connected to the Nether and not not to Azeroth. So, how, like, what is going on there? I, I, I'm getting a really, really familiar, like, Ner'zhul vibe from Beyond the Dark Portal here where he gets pushed through, he goes through this portal to the Nether and then he becomes a Lich King. Gul'dan gets, like, he's very obviously in pain and all this crazy fell energy is going through his body and he gets pushed through the nether, pushed through the portal, and the portal explodes. Pob probably killing Gul'dan too, but maybe not his spirit. Because we we all know at this point they're using Gul'dan to make the next expansion happen. I mean, they they haven't confirmed it, but I don't know a single person who doesn't believe that at this point. But, why would he do that? Like, why, like, why though? I'm getting this weird, like, Lich King, like, maybe he's gonna become, like, the, like, the alternate universe Lich King, which is dumb. It's really stupid. Like, it kind of really lessens the value of our Lich King and Ner'zhul in that manner, I think. Like, just let Gul'dan be Gul'dan. And so, so that also is confusing. Like, what if the pact was, like, linking the two of their souls, and, like, Archimonde was, like, transferring his soul to Gul'dan or something like that? Some Harry Potter shit going on there? Um, like, what, are we gonna see Gul'dan, like, his body with Archimonde's spirit or something? It's just, it's so dumb. And then going on to Archimonde, they made a big hullabaloo to talk about how this, like, there's only one legion and it transcends all realities and you can only kill demons in the nether and they made a big deal about how we're gonna, we're gonna kill this Archimond, or at least very much implied, we're gonna kill this Archimond in the nether and he'll be dead permanently. And what a terrible blow that'll be to the legion. But the cinematic where he, like, in the end where you see him die, they're back on Draenor already. So he died on Draenor, which means he's not dead still. Once again, he's not dead. Like, unless there's some weird, <laughs> unless there's, like, again, some weird soul-transferring nonsense, Gould, uh, Archimonde's not dead. All of this was for, like, really nothing. Archimonde's still alive again. He, he gets defeated and killed, killed, a second time, and he's still not dead. Like, this was my, one of my biggest problems with this whole, the Legion transcends all realities, and there's only one Legion that exists in the Nether, and their souls are tied to the Nether, and blah, blah, blah. If you don't kill them in the nether, then it doesn't matter when you kill them. It, it might be a victory in the very immediate term, but ultimately it didn't accomplish anything. You're still, he's still out there somewhere. What the fuck even, though, Blizzard? Like, really? Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Let me just check, check my list. Um, I mentioned... Gul'dan summoning Archimonde and how that made no sense. Grom being forgiven for apparently no reason. Drenai cheering at Grom's call. Cadgar just leaving for no reason. Thrall not being there. Gul'dan's nonsensical fate. Um, Muffinus's tweets. Um, always talking about the Drenai getting beaten down and then forgiving people for no reason. Um, let's get to how I would do the ending. So, you know, the fight, the raid, it all is exactly the same. Like, I'm not saying, like, let's rewrite tons of stuff. Let, the fight is exactly the same. That when you win the fight, the ending cinematic happens. Archimonde just dies. You just see him die. 
he maybe he'll say something like the legion is infinite will conquer all of what the fuck ever one of their bullshit they, things they say when they die but he dies and so like all of the heroes turn to the dark to the not the dark portal but the the port the black gate i think is what they call it and and Gul'dan's still standing there and he's kind of like smirking like he's smirking and he says something to the effect of like you know you might have defeated Archimonde, but this isn't the end and then he 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 reaches into his robes and he pulls out the shard of the vision of time that we still don't know what happened to that allowed Kairos to connect the dark portal in our universe to the one in this universe he does it, and he's like laughing, and he's, he turns around and walks through the portal, and you see the shard glow, and like the black gate portal turns from like maybe green to red to signify it connected to ours again, and then he walks through, and then you see it shut off. And so, like with the realization that Gul'dan has escaped, which pretty much he still does, but in a really, in a much better way in my opinion... Um, not some weird, confusing, tropey bullshit way. Like he just says, like he, you see him as he's going through the portal. He's holding up the shard and he's like walking through, and you hear him laughing. The shard glows, the portal turns red, and then as he goes through, it shuts down. And that's just when all the heroes have run up there to stop him, and they can't. And and um, Cadgar is like he's fucking freaking out. He's talking about how Gul'dan has escaped. He basically says kind of the same thing. As he does in the ending cinematic, saying like, you know, Gul'dan and his masters are never going to give up, and blah 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 blah. And then he, um, he, so that happens, and then you see Grom like looking around and saying that everyone's dead, and he he makes the same thing. He says, Drenor is free, but then only his orcs cheer, um, because. Side note here, it's really weird that like all of the people who all the NPCs fighting are all wearing the same armor. Something that I noticed if you go back and rewatch it. Like, the Iron Horde soldiers are wearing the same armor. The Draenei are wearing the same armor. The Frost Wolves are wearing the same armor. When they should be completely distinctly different. So in my version, they're all different. Like, the, the Iron Horde are wearing their shit. You know, the Draenei are wearing their light-based, futuristic-looking armor. The Frost Wolves are wearing, like, their leather and their shoulders and their fur. And... Grom says, like, look, Azeroth, or Draenor is free, blah, blah, blah. He cheers, only his soldiers cheer, because everyone else is, like, looking at their at the soldiers, like, warily, because of all the shit that just happened. So, yeah, Grom cheers, he says, says Draenor, he says, Draenor is free. Um, he cheers, all of his Iron Horde cheers, and then he says, Draenor is ours again. And he looks over after saying this and sees everyone staring at him. Because they fucking should be very wary of him after all the shit that he just did. So, they're all staring at him. Let me move my mic a little bit. I had to cut there for some shenanigans. But, um, everyone's very wary of him. And then you see, um, after he says, you know, Draenor is ours again. You see down in the battlefield, like, the Draenei, like, begin, like, like go into, like, battle stance. You see the, the Frost Wolf Lorks do it, too. And then you see his Iron, Iron Horde forces do it, um... And then meanwhile, as they're like all standing there, like ready to fight, um, Grom is still just looking at the leadership. And then Yorel and Duratan together walk forward. And um, Yorel begins by saying, Duratan, he's by saying, Draenor was never yours, Grom. And then Duratan finishes her sentence and says, Draenor has always been all of ours. And you have done terrible things terrible terrible things that cannot be forgiven and then Yorel begins speaking again and says you have caused the deaths of not only loved ones but hundreds and hundreds and thousands of complete innocence in your demented quest for domination and then um Cadgar steps forward and says we have all lost somebody great some or somebody we've all lost important people in this conflict. And then there's like a weird, like zoom out a little bit. And you see behind each of the three hero characters, like a spirit of the character of who died really quick show up. Not to like, not their actual spirit, but just to remind people like behind Cadgar, uh, Cordana standing there, um, behind Jarell, you know, Samara and, uh, Samara, Valen's the first one. And then it goes to Marad and then his, her sister Samara standing there. And then Durit behind Duratan is Gnar. Um And also his brother, too. Uh, Fenris Wolf... Wolf... What, Wolf Brother? I forgot his last name. But Fenris is standing there. And then it cuts back to Cadgar and says, But if we continue the bloodshed, 
there will be nothing left of this planet, and Draenor will suffer the same fate as ours. And then, like, everybody looks at Cadgar, like, what the fuck are you talking about? And Cadgar, like, puts out his hand, and he summons, like, an image of Draenor. And he says, this is what happened when the Legion and bloodlust and war consumed our Draenor. And you see it, like, crackle and explode. You see, based on the planet, you can tell it's from where the Black Temple is. Like, a big column of, like, arcane energy shoots up, and the planet kind of, like, crumbles and begins, like, falling apart into Outland. And... Every, like everyone's staring on in terror. Thrall's there too, still. By the way, Thrall in this in this version is there, and he's watching. Um, he like lowers his head because he's he knows what happens, and he's sad about it. But you see, like you see, Yorel um, and Duratan are just staring, like eyes wide open, and Grom is like staring in disbelief because he's seeing again what Garage showed him. And you see Yorel like a tear goes down her cheek, and you see you see uh, Duratan like turn away like this, um, and then. So then uh, Yorel and Duratan turn to each other and they nod and they look at Grom and they say, but despite everything you have done, and while we will never forgive you, we are willing to end this bloodshed if you are as well. And then Grom kind of stands there and he looks around for a second and he's like thinking about it and he goes, you know, my son, <laughs> because he did, he, know, he does know Garash is his son, by the way. My son showed me our world being invaded from another another universe, another army, an army larger than any of we, the orcs, could muster, coming through this portal and coming to destroy us. But now I see that he was wrong. He was wrong, and you are not a threat to us. We will help rebuild Draenor. And so then, like, everyone, like, kind of backs down. All the soldiers, like, lower their weapons. Um... And then, so it kind of, like, breaks up a little bit. You see Yorel and Duratan turn away and begin walking toward the portal. You see Cadgar turn away and walk toward the portal again. And um, he's sitting there examining it, like, maybe picking up dirt and, like, looking at it in his hand and doing some magical shenanigans. And Thrall uh, walks over to to Grom and, like, begins talking to him. Um, and that's the scene you see. That's the implication that he's telling him all the stuff that happens. Um, Duratan and Yorel come over here. Come, come over to where Cadgar is and begin talking to him and say, do you think we'll see Gul'dan again? What is he planning on doing in your universe? And Cadgar basically says, I, I, I don't know, but with Gul'dan's escape, the Horde and the Alliance are going to return to Azeroth to prepare for whatever he's doing next. And then the and Yorel looks at Duratan and they're kind of like, they look worried because, you know, they don't have enough, they don't have enough of their own forces to help start rebuilding. Um, and but Cadgar then looks, sees them doing this, and says, "But what Kirin Tor forces I have command of will remain here for the time being and help you rebuild, as will I until I need to be recalled to Azeroth to deal with Gul'dan when he pops up again." And it kind of just—he doesn't fly away like fucking weirdly. He's just standing there, and then the camera just kind of begins zooming out, and you see like the orcs, you see like the iron, the iron horde begin leaving, um, Thrall walks back to, to uh, Cadgar and you see Grom begin to leave and then you see um, that's basically when it ends you see the portal is shut down you see all of Grom is leaving with his forces you see Yorel, Duratan, Thrall and Cadgar at the portal and it kind of just fades out fades out zooms out zooms out zooms out and then fades to black because not every ending should be like super happy like because Gul'dan escaped even in the official one Gul'dan escaped it shouldn't be super happy so that's how my version would go. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's loads better than what happened with uh, with what we got. So to wrap up, I made this comment on Twitter, and I still believe it. For those of you who have been with me for a while and have seen my review of Vol'jin, Shadows of the Horde, I think my I talked about it on my YouTube. I talked about it on But Wait, There's Lore when I was on, and I talked about it on my friend Say Amara's uh, podcast. And in all three places, I said the exact same thing. And the most damning thing I could say about the book is if you don't read Vulgin Shadows of the Horde, nothing of value will be lost. You will not be ignorant of some lore that you should know of. There will not be some storyline twist that you missed out on. If you don't read it, literally, you're missing nothing. And I feel like I can make that same argument about Warlords with a slight tweak. 
almost exactly the same, but with a small little twist. Um, it feels like this expansion could have been entirely done in a book. Maybe even a short story, but at least a book, I think. Um, and I think that that really goes to exemplify my feelings that I said, like, literally the day that Warlords was announced and we saw the story of it, you can go back on this channel and look at my reaction video to the announcement of Warlords of Draenor. I still stand by it two years later, almost two years later. But I think after seeing this ending cinematic, and it very much feels like a finale. I know Blizzard has said, like, there's going to be more after 6.2. Maybe there'll be, like, an intermediate patch connecting the two expansions, this one and the next one. But the Warlords of Draenor contain story of Draenor and the Iron Horde and the Legion. I think, I'm pretty sure, I'm confident in saying it's done now. After seeing that, I think it just reaffirms my opinion that this is an entirely filler expansion. That nothing that happened... We lost, I mean, nothing matters except for the characters from our universe that came here and died, which really is just like Cordana and Murad. And they, they weren't even really important characters, let's be honest. But all of what happened this expansion could be done in a book. And if you hadn't played it or hadn't read the book, the only thing you really would have to know going into the next expansion is that Gul'dan escaped to our universe, or to the Nether eventually to get to our universe. That's like literally it. Like that, 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 that's, that's such a. That's the most damning thing I can say about any kind of game with a story, is that you can ignore ninety nine percent of the story. Just know what happens at the very end. You don't really even need context of it, and just go into the next expansion, and you're not missing anything. That's how I feel about Warlords of Draenor. Once again, I'll say, like I mentioned in my tweet to Muffin, Muffin is, the, the gameplay aspects of 6.2 are great. They really, really dropped the ball on the story. And like I said, I'm not really even angry anymore. I'm just disappointed and sad that they failed again. We had a failure of an ending for Mist of Pandaria. But at least the rest of Mist of Pandaria's expansion had a good story in my opinion. I know people disagree with me, but I still think Miss of Pandaria is the best storytelling expansion they've ever done, ignoring 5.3 and 5.4, um, which are terrible, at least for the Alliance. Um, but they have an entire expansion where you could ignore all of it, and you wouldn't miss anything. You wouldn't miss anything. All you would, You'd have to be told in like a one-sentence explanation Gul'dan was captured by the Iron Horde, who eventually was defeated. He summoned the Legion to... Maybe it's like two or three sentences now that I'm talking. He summoned the Legion to Draenor. Archimonde was killed, and Gul'dan escaped to our universe. That's it. You don't even really need any of the context. Um, they could have said that at BlizzCon, announcing the... If they would have announced the next expansion when they announced Warlords, and just said, like... All of this, these things happened, Gul'dan, Legion, escaped. I would have been like, I got it. I would have been a little curious, and that's where the book would have came in. But I would have been like, got it. Let's do Ajara now. Because that's what I think is still coming. I still think Ajara expansion is coming. But who knows at this point, some people are predicting that there could be, we could be going straight to Argus, which I think is a real... A real gaping hole in the threats if we just skip right to Argus because Azara is still active and definitely consolidating her power. She took Neptulon. She has his trident or whatever the fuck it was called. Um, she has control of the seas of, of Azeroth. You know, her her city is still home at the bottom of the, of the Maelstrom. Maybe with some remnants of the Well of Eternity there still empowering them in some way. Who knows? But yeah, so that's my feelings about the cinematic... Um, I know I got, like, a little angry at the beginning of this video, but more because it's just, it's, it, it's, it's not so much that I don't like what happened, in, and I don't, it's just the, the nonsensical, like, contextless, uh, just fallacious, poor storytelling that happens. It's, it's like characters not knowing things that any other author would have them know, convenient things happening, 
nonsensical decisions. It's just, it's so, if you would have asked me like two years ago, three years ago, um, before the end of, of, of MOP, but before the end of MOP, if you would have asked me, what do you think about the Warcraft story? I would have said, it's pretty good. You know, it's, it's, it's tropey and cliche, but all of Blizzard's stories are, but it's not bad. Now I'm just like, man, this, the story is terrible. The writing is clearly just in the trash at this point. They're not even trying, it feels like. They're just filling out time so they can milk as much money off of WoW that they can before it eventually dies in like five or six years. That's how I feel. So, thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Make sure to keep a lookout for the Warcraft 3 playthrough that's coming back. Um, I'm also doing a short Mega Man 8 playthrough, and I'll explain why in the first episode of that. But if you're interested in that, keep a lookout for that. But until then, thanks for watching, everyone. Stay awesome, and I'll see you next time. Farewell.